the seismic hazard parameters which we compute as the result of that whole PSHA process, we compute them for bedrock level, right. The results does not contain the effect of local soil, which is top 30 meter of the soil layer for example, right. So, any amplification in the results of PSHA or deamplification as a result of the effect of local soil is not accounted in that whole science which we have studied up till now. We studied the classical PSHA in which we only consider the, the stiff soil or you can say the bedrock level, right. So, the hazard curve which you get at the end of that process will be by default for site class B or C, right, a stiff soil. So, actually it will be for uh, you can say stiff soil and if your structure is located on a site which have let us say site class D or E flexible soil, then you have to modify those PSHA results again to account for the effect of local soil, right. So, you have two ways to do that actually. One is uh, that you use the code prescribed site modifiers. Building codes also provide you these, these uh, site class modifiers, because uh, we know already that the standard PSHA results are, are reported at bedrock level, right. So, they are not modified for any particular site class when you report them or produce them actually. Then based on uh, for project to project basis for different sites, they are modified with different modifiers. So, if you have um, site class D or E, you may expect some amplification, but if you have site class A hard rock, then you may expect some deamplification even. So, the modifier may be even less than 1 for loose soils the modifier will be greater than 1. So, one way to handle this is to just select those modifiers from building codes like IBC or ASC 7 for example. The other way is or more accurate way is to perform site specific analysis. Uh, in this case it will be called as site response analysis. Site response analysis will tell you the if exact amplification uh, of the ground motion, uh, which will be there or exhibited by your local soil. So, in that detailed analysis you actually model the site and you shake it from the base of that site, let us say at bedrock level, let us say 30 meter deep. You shake it with the representative ground motions, which are uh, coming from the PSHA results and then you record or calculate the ground motions at top of that soil, soil layer or site. That top ground motion will be what your structure is going to experience, right. So, the difference or uh, ratio between bottom and top will give you exact amplification which your site have produced. And then you will see one more phenomena that the site will not be amplifying all the frequencies in your ground motion. Uh, with the same factor. So, you will give a different spectrum at base for future earthquake and you get a different shaped spectrum at top, right. It all depends on the layers and components and structure of your site, which you can quantify by having bore log for example, or from any other uh, you can say detailed geotechnical study, right. So, actually let us say this is your top layer at which your structure will be located and this is your bedrock, this is let us say 30 meter. Now, top 30 meter of the soil will modify the ground shaking. The results which you get for example, SS, S1 or the complete spectrum of future earthquake, they will be by default at bedrock level for site class B or C, right. Now, in order to account for the local soil effect, this top 30 meter layer, uh, you will either amplify or deamplify them, right. So, first approach as I have said, 
modifiers or site coefficients from building codes Modi modifiers from codes and the second is the detailed analysis site specific analysis that you actually model that site site specific analysis it is also called as the site response analysis ground response analysis let's say ground response analysis and it again have two types one is uh, actually three types 1d analysis then two dimensional and even three dimensional also the most common is the one dimensional analysis in which you just model one you kind of a column or one particular uh, you can say element represents your whole site right all the layers in your your site along the depth they can be manifested in that model uh, represented in that model and then you shake that model at the base and determine the shaking at the top right so it may be possible that you give this kind of a spectrum which has a peak at 0.5 second time period at the base level and when you calculate at the top level maybe you give it as an input here and the output is at this point and when you take that output from that analysis it gives you a spectrum which has a peak at let's say 1 second not at 0.5 second and obviously the amplification or deamplification will be there also so if the peak spectral acceleration corresponding to 0.5 second was previously let's say 0.7 g it may be 1 g for example at 1 second now right so not only that your spectrum will go up or down depending upon whether your soil is amplifying the effect of ground shaking or deamplifying it will also shift the properties of ground shaking it will shift the predominant period it will modify the ground shaking it's it will modify its frequency content right so it's like uh, you are modeling a structure you are modeling that whole site as a structure and shaking that site so depending upon the site's own dynamics it is modifying the effect of that ground shaking at its top right so the ground shaking recorded or uh, calculated actually from that model as an output at the top is a filtered ground motion filtered by the dynamics of the site itself now if the soil uh, if the the soil deposit top 30 meter let's say is loose soil and it itself have a time period of around let's say 1.5 seconds if the site can be considered a structure with a time period of 1.5 second obviously uh, any shaking which it will be given at the base the top shaking will be the response of ground and that response will have will be having its peak at around 1.5 second right that ground shaking is kind of the effect is amplified for uh, for the time period which is matching with the time period of ground itself right so the summary is that not only the amplitude of ground shaking increase is increased by the local soil effect the frequency content of shaking is also is also modified right so please remember that mexico city case 1985 where the ground shaking recorded at the top soil by any recording station was near periodic having a time period of predominant time period of around 1 second so the ground shaking recorded for that particular 1985 mexico city earthquake that ground shaking looked like near periodic it was like push and pull having almost a time period of 1 second right so it caused resonance for a particular range of heights buildings of particular heights medium rise buildings for example and caused most damage in those buildings only so which means that uh, that is a separate study itself that we haven't covered actually ground response analysis or site response analysis that we actually calculate the response of the site itself in order to shift the bedrock level hazard to the surface level hazard right or uh, obviously 
we have the first option anyways that we don't go for that detailed option or separate analysis for that we directly pick the modifier from from uh, the building code so previously they used to be only the function of site class uh, but now uh, we from last few uh, generations of building codes uh, they are both the functions of site class as well as the hazard parameter so if you talk about uh, ubc 97 they are the function of uh, zone or pga and the site class if you talk about ibc now they are the function of ss and s1 and at the same time site class right so you use your ss and s1 and your site class to pick a number and if that number is more than 1 which means your site your site has the tendency to amplify ground motions if it is less than 1 which means obviously it will uh, it will be reducing that effect but that is only for i think site class a we will check that table also uh, for site class f for very loose soil uh, and for soils having organic material for example uh, the code will recommend that you have only this option too so for certain soil types you only have this second option go for the site response analysis and obviously you can guess that in 2d and 3d what will be the analysis type in 2d analysis we may model the whole site as a 2d model in 3d we may go for a three dimensional model right so when we make hazard curve it is for one standard soil type which is by default stiff soil type right 